Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the internet. Uh, my name is Ross Briley. And I'm Joshua Sadler. And you sound awful. Thank you. <laughs> you Thank you. You sound like yes. I feel and look. Good. So, uh, are you all right? No. Why, <laughs> no. <laughs> why not? No, I'm fine. I, I've just got a sore throat, but uh, a three-hour radio show doesn't help to, um, <laughs> to help you get over that. Uh, What's so it? I'm just drinking razor blades here. Um, <laughs> To try and help with that. It's a great, it's a home remedy from the, uh, from, Ruth Sadler, from, the from the sadistic Sadler household. Uh, not only that, but you've been uh, you've been enjoying yourself, haven't you, in I life? Have. <laughs> well, I mean, I've always enjoyed myself, but really? particularly I'm taking on board 2016 and trying to have a good time. And branching out with new interests, uh, yeah. which includes such uh, uh, modern pastimes as um, bingo, bingo, B I. NGO and Bingo was his name. Oh, yeah. what came first, the uh, the the voice or the the bingo? Have you, did you catch the kind voice of, at I the think bingo? I caught the voice at the bingo, <laughs> not from the bingo caller, obviously, but from excuse the punters that were there. Did you excuse me, love? Can I have a can I have a bingo call? And they went, what? And you went, excuse me, love. Better. That's better. Yeah. Yeah. I had to have a certain husky tone to it. I, I went out the front and smoked five silk cuts, and then I was a, a better better able to do it. There's so many things. Okay, there's a lot that I would that I would like to talk about to do with bingo. But have you ever you've never been to the bingo before? I went once about five, maybe six years ago, to one in Fleetwood. Right. Um, because we were visiting a mate and we thought, oh, because we'll do that, that'll be fun. And we all got too drunk and we got thrown out because. <laughs> You can't like we we were like trying to be quiet and I, but one of us ended up laughing about something. You cannot be quiet when when drunk. Well, yeah, I know exactly. And if you're imagining people are listening out for someone to go house or line yeah. or whatever, you know. What At least you go <laughs> exactly. So we got chucked out. Fair yeah. enough. But this is the first time that I sat all the way through a full bingo thing. We got an Uber there, so it's Mecca Bingo in Leeds, and I typed into Uber from my current location to Mecca. <laughs> And it thought I meant Mecca in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> and I was like, that's ridiculous. So I, I pressed take me there, like, just to see. And apparently you can get an Uber to Mecca. <laughs> How much would it cost? I will tell you right now. So this is the, usually it will give you an estimate like... Five to seven pounds. Exactly. Yeah. So we've got 5,215 to 6,954 pounds. <laughs> Where's the 1,700 pounds coming in? What's Where's 1700 that? pounds? It'd be between the two potential things. What what is it like traffic? You, Ross, you're driving to Mecca. <laughs> You've got no idea what difficulties may lie ahead. Come on. If how, a, where would you how would listen, you drive to listen, Mecca? If you've got a two pound discrepancy between <laughs> Chapel Ellerton and Leeds City Centre because there might be traffic, what about driving to Mecca? <laughs> <laughs> what if the ferry's late or you miss it? <laughs> or, or I don't know, a war breaks out before you get there and you can't cross over a certain border. It's in, like, it's in the Middle East. Uh, but the fact that you... Look, okay, all right. That's the... Okay, listen. Six thousand, six thousand nine hundred fifty-four pounds And it says below it, fares may vary due to traffic, weather, or other factors. Estimates do not include discounts or promotions. Routes displayed are examples only and may not reflect the route on which estimates are based. Now, I looked this up on, on Google Maps. It would take you two days and 21 hours to get to Mecca if you drove straight there at the full speed limit without <laughs> stopping. Helpfully, Google also gave me another route which went through Austria instead, which would save 21 minutes. <laughs> That would make all the difference, wouldn't so, it? So, if you actually factored in, uh, let's say you had eight hours sleep a night, you, you look, you're looking at five days to get there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That Uber driver is going to... You know, the, the, the worst thing is, the Uber driver is going to come back on his own. <laughs> no, yeah, right? <laughs> so that's why he's got Unless to put this got Uber in Saudi in Arabia. It. And he could just... Could, well, well, yeah, no, I've said this to Uber drivers before, and they're like, oh, I live in Wakefield. And I'm like, well... Is that, do you come into Leeds because it's better? And they're like, we just go wherever it is. Like, if someone asks me to go to Manchester, I'll do that and then I might get a fare in Manchester. So maybe they're doing the same <laughs> there. Just go on holiday, but via taking a, a customer to, to Mecca. Uh, John, we haven't seen you for a week. Where are you, love? I'm in, I'm in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Why? Well, I got a fare and... Uh, and this I... lad fell asleep back at taxis, woken up, jabbering on about wanting to go to bingo. <laughs> What number is it, Ross? Seven and eight. 
Nine. That's ironic, isn't it? I don't know. What, what's irony? I've got no idea. I've literally no idea what it is. We should discuss it in depth. Oh dear. Alanis Morissette said about the song, For me, the great debate on whether what I was saying in ironic was ironic wasn't a traumatic debate. I'd always embraced... I'd, the I'd made a million pounds. I, exactly. <laughs> I'd always embraced the fact that every once in a while, I'd be the malapropism queen. <laughs> I don't know what she means there. And when Glenn and I were writing it, we definitely were not doggedly making sure that every everything was technically ironic. Was technically ironic. So she's saying we were definitely not dog, doggedly making sure that everything was technically ironic. Uh, and a malapropism is when you say something, but you mean something else. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but that's when you get two words confused. Yeah, it is, yeah. That's yeah. not like meanings confused it's actually when you get the words you, you, confused. yeah you say the wrong word someone yeah. uh one again another one of our customers in bristol described a building as that's an absolute abortion of a building that is <laughs> and he meant abomination obviously he did, did yeah but you know i can this sounds like the right word but so what it i'm should, saying well, is but it shouldn't have been there so. i don't think she's even got the hang of the word malapropism no i'm not even sure she so has either. if she can't han handle that and i think that's a relatively easy concept then I'm not sure that... Because she's saying... Hi, I'm Ross Briley, the world's leading malapropism lawyer. <laughs> you would have another word there instead of lawyer, wouldn't you? The world leading malapropism liar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I think is rather suitable there. <laughs> oh, I love it when I make a witty quip. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> on radio. <laughs> on radio, actually. We definitely were not dogg doggedly making sure that everything was technically ironic. Yeah. Well, none of it is none ironic. None of it's ironic, yeah. So, so you're a very, you're, a, you're slack, if anything. Very so maybe slack. she's gone triple layer on this and oh gone... Oh, my God. She's like, got I'm, I'm going to make people think that I was trying to be ironic. Oh, my God. She's got irony within irony. With, she's, it's Inception irony. Inception irony. Incredible. I mean, I would be impressed by it, but I don't know what irony is. No, you don't. Which no. is ironic, isn't it? It is, isn't it? <laughs> Isn't it ironic? Eh? Is it? I don't know, is it? I don't know. Is it ironic? Is it? Can something that's made of iron be ironic? Can it be I irony? Iri irony? Like, you know, if, if it's... Yeah, it oh, could be iron. Yeah, yeah, if something has an iron-like yeah. quality, you know... Is, it's, a bit, it's a bit irony, isn't it? It's a bit irony. It's a bit irony, that, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit irony. Uh, if you've got, like, oh, have you got some fillings? Yeah, it tastes a bit irony. It tastes a bit irony? Yeah, that's ironic, isn't it? <laughs> Is it though? Is it? Is that actually <laughs> ironic then? No. Oh, all right. Okay. Is it just your whole life just going to go? That's ironic, isn't it? Is it? I don't know. I don't know. I I, oh, I was I was going to say I literally don't know, but that is appropriate. I literally do not know what irony is. If you know what irony is, tweet us at radio underscore Yorkshire or text me, Dad, if you know what it is. <laughs> No, don't text me dad. I'm asking my dad to text me what irony is on Radio Yorkshire. Isn't it ironic, Mr Sadler, that you're the one that went to the bingo, yet I'm the one with the bingo ball ball? I, I don't know, Ross. I don't, I don't know. what. How many times do I have to tell you I do not know what irony is? Oh, that's a fair point. I thought we'd already established that. Uh, do you know who Ozzy Osbourne is? Yes. Have you been to see him live, aged 11? I, well, he's older than that now, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, but he was great when he was 11. Oh, I'm sure he was. No, I was 11 when I went to see him. Did he see you? Uh, no, I was on the balcony and he was busy. He was doing this... His uh, thing. His thing. What's, yeah. you know, buying... What is his thing? Buying the head off of uh, animals and, 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 and that kind of jazz. Reality TV. Is that suitable for an 11-year-old? Uh, no, it's not affecting me at all. Uh, obviously, going to the Ozzy Osbourne gig, uh, I requested a T-shirt and um, it was, you know, Ozzy Osbourne, it's obviously Black Sabbath are a bit, they're not satanic necessarily, but, you know, those kind of bands would have, uh, imagery lines. would be, yeah, yeah, it would be kind of like that. And I used to, I got this T-shirt and I would I'd just wear it all the time. And I remember going, I, I insisted I wore it to non-uniform day at school, <laughs> which wasn't appropriate when you're like 12, 13, I think. And also, I distinctly remember one day, I was at home, uh, 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 and my mum and dad were at work, and there was a ring of the doorbell. And, and Ozzy I... Osbourne came round. <laughs> <laughs> there he was. Hello, Julie. <laughs> I'm sorry, seen... I've got I've to come to sign his T-shirt. I've come to, to say sorry about that fight, Shut man. Shut up! So, 
Hey, Jack, Jack, back, get back in the car, love. Anyway, go on, you were saying. Yeah, and it was, um, and I entered the door in my Ozzy Osbourne t shirt, and there was a Jehovah's Witness stood there, and they just went, Oh, oh is, is your parents in? And I was like, No, no, they're not. And they kind of looked at me, looked at my t shirt, and went, Never mind then. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of left, as if I was some sort of child of the devil. Well, you know, you would think that, I think, if you'd never come into contact with something like that. Obviously, it's all a bit of stage bravado or whatever. And actually, the sort of satanic thing. Well, I always wondered with Ozzy Osbourne, maybe you know this. I don't know, maybe you know this, I haven't seen it. What do you I'll ask you. Ozzy, you know, when you bit the head off that bat... You know, you know the old... Yeah. <laughs> Ozzy! <laughs> I imagine they flattered together at some point. They would have been the only two rockers from Birmingham. <laughs> I think I don't like all this happy, happy music that you make, Noddy. I'm gonna go. <laughs> no, listen. I've got like, a genuine right. question. All right. Did, I don't. Was it a rumor? This thing about him biting the head off of a bat and spitting it into the audience, or did no, this no, actually no. happen? Okay. In that case, then, did he work his way up to the bat? Because like, you're not going to go straight in at a bat, did he? What, did you mean he, like the nursery rhyme about the, the woman who like, swallowed yeah, did, a fly? Did he, did he start with an ant and go, like that, ah, and think, yeah, oh, I can manage that, and then like a mouse, and then a bat? And also, if he did work up, like, has he gone further than that? Did he like take a pug on stage with him and think, I'm never going to manage this, I'm hungry, but I couldn't eat a whole pug. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. But the other good Ozzy Osbourne story was the one where he um, he snorted a line of ants. Did you ever read that? No. He said apparently, I can't remember what it was, but he was it, there, were, there was a line of ants down next to a pool somewhere where he was staying. And obviously, you know, at that time he was probably snorting anything that moved, literally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he did. So he, he just did. saw a line of ants and someone, I don't know if he dared him or whatever, but he did. People also, I'll snort anything that moves. This is Marvin. This is Marvin. Get up me nose. Get up, get up there. <laughs> oh, Ozzy Osbourne, you know. Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs>